I've heard people, um, their strategy is they get changed in their office mm. into their gym clothes and they drive to make sure that they don't like go to a bar or go home and show up in their gym clothes not sweaty because oh, I like that. Last questions. you can join me because we sent out an IG story asking questions that you want to be answered by Alex because he's an expert. He knows everything, like everything. And we got so many great questions. And this is why I started Fitness Tuesday. It's to motivate people, inspire people to live their best lives, right? That's it. And so glad that you guys sent all these questions. And actually, this is my first time looking at these questions. And so you're ready to answer them? I hope so. Okay, you ready for the first one? Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where do you start if you want to start working out at home? Great question. Um, working out at home, really, the whole thing is one, you need a space to be able to work out in. Yeah. That's going to be, you know, kind of away from your regular kitchen, backyard, whatever. Yeah. A space that you kind of dedicate to it. I tell a lot of people a big part of going to a gym is that mental clarity of your leaving whatever your day to day is and going to work out. So make a little corner, move some stuff away, get a little spot set up. And then really, you just want to find somewhere, some videos or something that you can follow along to find some exercises that you can do. There's a ton of people on Instagram and YouTube saying, you over here. Make this Tuesday, yes. You can use that every day. That's so right. That just Tuesday. And so you can just like save a whole bunch of them on your Instagram yeah. and just go through and look and find some exercise that you like and just start moving. That's really what it's all about. And I remember when I first started working out, I used to actually wear my gym clothes while I was sleeping and then get right out of bed. Actually, do you know that I've read multiple books about people who do that? Yeah. I think it's like Mark Cuban actually. Oh, no way. He wears basketball, goes to bed, and goes play basketball yeah, in the morning. And I yeah. forced myself to do it. And then I would work out in the morning and then get out there. 20 minutes of workout and then leave. So uh, is there anyone, any workouts that you should focus on if you have just a little bit of time in the morning? Honestly, I'm a big believer of like whatever you enjoy doing yeah. and whatever you're going to do regularly, that's it. There's no one workout better than another workout mm -hmm. unless it's something that you're not doing. Right. I feel really short right now. Do you notice how short I am? I like this. It's <laughs> <This is> great. <laughs> okay, next question. What's the best workout to do to get a stomach similar to Sangita? Mm, the workout that is going into your kitchen cupboard and throwing all the junk out. <laughs> but I need so much crap. The thing is, like, <laughs> I read somewhere the other day, uh, it was like one of, the, one of those fitness guys posting a quote that was really good. And it was basically like, if it's in your house, either you or a loved one's going to eat it at some point. I, it's true. Especially so, when you have kids, you're like, they, they'll have chips, for example, yep. right? And then you're like, I'll just try it one bite. One it's bite. just there. And then you just start and keep doing it. Uh, but it is in the kitchen. It really is. You have to focus on the right foods to eat. So what are the right things to eat um, to get abs? <laughs> so basically, so when people talk about like clean food or whatever, typically what they're referring to is foods that are harder to overeat on. So when it comes to the concept of like caloric density, so for example, take a Big Mac, it's about 800 calories of food, yeah. 740 calories of food. So there's nothing inherently wrong with a Big Mac. The problem is the 740 calories in something that's this big, whereas imagine making a salad that's 740 calories, it's gonna be a huge bowl, you're gonna be really full for a long time. So the best foods to eat are foods that are gonna keep you full for a long time because the time we make the worst decisions is when we're hungry. Yeah. When you're hungry, you're always gonna grab something and that's just wired in us genetically. You want something that has a lot of calories in it and that's just natural. So yeah. if you eat a lot of food and you plan it out so that you're gonna not feel that hunger, you can start making better choices. It's right? true, you're right. You have to eat fairly well and sometimes you go on vacation, things don't go well and you just yep. get back into it. But um, working out is very important. So what kind of workouts can you do to make sure you can, you can't really focus, right? You can't focus on certain parts of your body. The but thing is your body genetically is programmed. You know, you have people with different body types. Your body stores fat in different places just based on your genes. So you can thank your ancestors for that. Yeah. Um, a big, but what we can do through exercise and eating right is maximize our expression of those genes so to be the healthiest version of ourselves okay um so eating better workouts that you enjoy doing workouts that get your heart rate up you should have your heart rate up every day it's mm -hmm. very important um so it's not just strength training but it's also not just cardio yeah find something that you enjoy doing regularly get your heart rate up all the time and push yourself yeah that's what it is and weight training yeah. that's very that important apps coming up Weights. All Lifting weights actually, right. so especially over your head, uses a lot of core. Yeah, thrusters. We love yeah. thrusters, don't we? Yeah. All right, next question. I only have time to run on the treadmill. How can I maximize this time on the treadmill? Mm, um, intervals are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably heard of the Tabata interval. We use a lot in CrossFit. 
Um, there's a ton of different intervals. If you Google, they have these interval timer apps that you can do 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for eight times. Uh, you, there's a bunch of different things that you can do. The whole idea being, if you're on a treadmill rather than just running nonstop, use that to go intense and back it off and vary your, your effort level. You're gonna get a lot more payoff that So if way. you do that for 15 minutes of interval training, that's mm -hmm. way more efficient than running for an hour, you would say? Yeah, okay. and for a lot of people, um, again, if you're training to run a triathlon or something like that, and you're gonna have to run for two hours in the middle of it, that's a different story. But if you're just training for health, intervals are gonna be your most efficient and the most bang for your buck in terms of time. Okay, next question. How do you beat your sugar cravings? Oh, well. <laughs> I actually need to know this too. I, <laughs> I'm addicted to sugar and this is a problem. So, so well. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an addictive. It's a brain functionality that mm -hmm. screws you up. So like, how do you get out of it? Well, so your brain's a part of your body that needs sugar. <laughs> yeah. Everything else can deal with sugar, but your brain needs sugar. So, of course, it doesn't need too much. So when you're getting that sugar craving, it's usually caused by, it's been a long time without eating. So how many times have you, uh, you can see if this resonates with you. You've had a long day on the set, you haven't eaten, mm -hmm. kind of feel a little foggy, mm -hmm. you want sugar, mm -hmm. right? Um, so usually it comes down to you just didn't plan meals in advance. So the best way to deal with sugar cravings is planning food in advance, kind of like what I was saying before, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not in this hungry state where you're like, where do I get energy? Because your body just starts looking for the best source of energy and sugar is a very dense and potent form of energy. Mm -hmm. um, so planning your foods ahead and then trying to make better sweet choices when you do go there. Mm -hmm. Fruits over donuts, as an right. example. So it's okay to eat fruits. It breaks down differently than, yep. okay. Yep. My problem is after dinner, I want something sweet mm -hmm. and I need to get over that. You can, but at the same time, I, I really like to tell people there's no such real thing as good food or bad food. There's foods that you eat too much of and foods that are hard to eat too much of. Okay. So you could have something sweet after dinner, but that should be the time that you have something sweet, not you wake up in the morning and have a bowl of cereal and then you have a donut at lunch in the Tim Hortons drive through and then you have some ice cream before dinner and then you have dessert after dinner, you know? Yeah. That's too much. Okay. You can have some sweet stuff. Control yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's what it comes down choices. to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a hard one though. How to lose my dad bod. Mm, we're going back to this kitchen thing. Um, yeah. The foods that you're eating, along with the habits that you're building, mm -hmm. that's the biggest key. I tell a lot of people is that if you look at the, you know, post dad bod version of you, he has a whole bunch of different habits and hobbies and probably even like does different things with his friends mm -hmm. than dad bod you, mm -hmm. right? So maybe he only drinks beer and watches football with his friends every other weekend not all day Sunday, right? right? So yeah. if you look at that non-dad bod you, he's gonna be doing different stuff. So you gotta start getting to, to be that person. So that could be, you go to the gym a couple more times, you have a couple less beers, maybe you hang out, this is gonna sound crazy, you hang out with your friends and you don't have any beers. It's not Ooh. as crazy, yeah. it is possible, I've yeah. seen it happen. Yeah. All right, how to stay motivated to work out. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who go to the gym are, are generic gym, I'm gonna say, you walk in and you're overwhelmed by it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the motivation is to find what you love to yep. do, right? And yep. just stick to it. I think scheduling is very important. 100%. I really think with motivation, I think with motivation is transient, it's a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Just like some days you wake up and you don't want to go to work. You're not motivated, but you go anyways, why? Well, yeah. it's kind of important. You got bills to pay, you got your career to build, you got all these kinds of things, right? Um, so I think if you just rely on like, if you, I think a lot of times people look on the outside and they see you posting all your fitness Tuesday and see you working all the time. She's like, she's so motivated all the time. I can tell you guys she's not motivated all the time. She comes in all the time though, and that's the difference, right? <laughs> because it's, at some point you'd have to be like, I'm going to bed in my gym clothes and I'm getting up and going to the gym. Yeah. That's what I need to do. It's not because like, what do I feel like doing right now? Like sitting here on the couch and eating chips or going to the gym? Because there's going to be times where you don't feel like going to the gym. The next one is cardio before, we've always talked about this, cardio before weight. Oh, in terms Pretty. of like weight, um, it can work. I mean, for the most part, I like to do it the other way around. Yeah. Just because when you're tired from a serious cardio session, you can't lift as much weight or lift it as effectively. Right. That's all. But the weight won't really interfere with your cardio. So it's usually like a non-interference thing without getting too nerdy. Whatever you start with, you don't want, or yeah, you don't want that to mess up the next part of your, right. your workout. Uh, how many times a week can you cheat on your diet? Mm. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> what if it does one big cheat? Does that count? Like if like, you, yeah, yeah. how's that work? Um, it does that add up though, right? The calories add up. It always adds up. When we do nutrition coaching with clients, I have them track like their whole week and to see what their averages are. 
a lot of people are actually shocked after a while because they'll be like, I'm 100% on like Monday, mm -hmm. like say we'll go three days, of three, three meals a day, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all my meals are good. Mm -hmm. Saturday morning, a little off, but not too bad. Saturday lunch is small and Saturday night, I blow it up. And when it comes to losing weight, it's like, hey, that Saturday night blow up cost you your whole week's worth of progress. Yeah. So for a lot of times I tell people like, the thing is really, and this, when it comes to like cheating on a diet, like you're only cheating yourself. You're not cheating anyone else. It's not like high school where like you're cheating on the test and you get to pass anyways. Mm -hmm. So for me is find a diet that you don't need to cheat from. That's what a lot of people don't get right. Yeah, but there's also that pressure over the weekend. You're hanging out with your friends, and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you know, I can, you know, have beer and pizza, or whatever. It yeah. is. And that's the problem. Like, how do you control that, or how do you, I guess, how do you hang out with your friends and be able to not do that? I'm, I'm a big proponent of you can have beer and pizza on Saturday, but there's a difference between if you look at what like a normal serving sizes mm -hmm. would be like maybe two beers and two slices of pizza. Yeah. But somewhere in our head it all got messed up in our binge mentality. Like I want a whole pizza. Yeah. Or I want like chicken wings. I want garlic bread. I want four slices of pizza and eight beers. And like, man, I don't know why this weight loss thing just isn't working. <laughs> I'll have a salad tomorrow and we'll start on Monday. Right? Every good diet starts on Monday. Always. I right? know. That's why I told myself. Yes, coming over today. Yep. We're, we're not having any But yeah, so try to find a diet that lets you enjoy some of the foods yeah. you like in moderation mm -hmm. that you don't have to cheat. Yeah, we have another segment coming up just uh, talking about all the different diets, and so cool. we'll stay tuned for that one as well. We'll answer more questions about that. Uh, what does CrossFit actually do for you? Oh man, I could go on this part forever. I um, know. Well, there's a couple things. One, I really like the fact that you mentioned you show up and the workout's given to you. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I think in every, what drew me to it at the beginning when I first heard about it 13, 14 years ago was I get to just show up and you tell me what to do. As someone who used to play sports, I really like this idea of like, you tell me what to do and I just have to be an athlete for an hour. Mm -hmm. I just do what you tell me to do. I don't sit here being like, what exercise should I do next? Like, do I do this? Do no, you just tell me what to do and I have to work on, you know, pushing myself. Um, and then at the mix, uh, the, I guess the second part would be, I really like the fact that it makes you good at a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So the whole premise of CrossFit is, you know, if you were to hang out with your friends that just run, you'll be able to hang with them. Mm -hmm. They're going to run better than you, but you can run and keep up. Yeah. And then if you go hang out with your friends that lift weights, you can hang with them and keep up. Yeah. But if you take the person who just exclusively lifts weights and you take them with your friends that run, they're going to be toast mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. A lot of people trash CrossFit. Yep. You know, they say you get injured, you, mm -hmm. uh, there's certain moves that you shouldn't be doing. Um, and it's not good for you. Like, I mean, what's your argument on that? Well, it's just like anything, it's the implementation of it, of, of it right? Yeah. If you have a good trainer who's taking you through these movements and is making sure that you're doing movements appropriate for you, because I completely agree, not everyone needs to do every movement. Right. And that's where having a good trainer that comes in and sees you and assesses you and works to say, okay, this movement isn't good for you, we're gonna give you a substitute. Mm -hmm. And that's what good trainers do. And I think that argument, if you were to talk to any personal trainer, can be made about all training methodologies. Bam! Mic drop, we need a mic drop. We don't, we don't have to. There you go, yeah! To, too high. to all those haters out there. <laughs> all right, last question. Yes. Are you single? See you guys on the next episode. <laughs> you gotta answer the question! <laughs>